What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be taking a look at NEO stock in specific, ticker symbol NIO, as well as some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching right now and looking to trade in the month of July in 2019. So if you enjoy this video, guys, if you do find value in this content, Feel free to go down below and hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel and joining our two free communities that are linked down below. One of them being the Strive Smart Discord group chat and the Strive Smart Facebook group. And all of those are linked again down below in the description box. So with that further ado, guys, let's just get right into it. Right now, the markets just closed two minutes and 30 seconds ago. The S&P 500 ended up closing down $19.62 today down 0.65%, a sizable pullback in the S&P. The Dow Jones ended up dropping 0.42% here, down $115.64. And the NASDAQ down 33 points here at the close, roughly down about 0.45%. So it seems like the pullback that started yesterday in the markets has continued into today and actually really accelerated into today. Because if you guys watched um, yesterday's market update video and you were in tune with the markets yesterday, they didn't drop as much as they did today. The S&P yesterday, if I'm correct, I don't know if I'm exactly correct on this, but it was down about like 0.2, 0.3%. And obviously it was down double that today. The Dow Jones was down something like, um, you know, 0.1, 0.2%, and it's down double that right now. And the NASDAQ yesterday was down about 0.35%, I believe, point, um, you know, 4%, something like that. And you guys can see it tanking even harder right now. I'm actually interested to see, is that because of Netflix's earnings? Yes, it was. Oh my goodness, guys. Take a look at that. Netflix is actually just reporting earnings right now. We'll take a look at that in a couple of minutes here, but you can see the weight that the NASDAQ, or rather, uh, yeah, the, uh, the weight that Netflix stock has on the NASDAQ. It drops so heavily, and the NASDAQ futures are dropping right now as we speak, right? So let's break down some technicals here before we do take a look at some stocks um, and NEO and some ETFs um, in a couple of minutes here. So the S&P... You know, yesterday we were talking about this 20-day, one-hour chart. We were talking about this 50 SMA resistance. It broke that level, or rather that 50 SMA level of support. It broke that level of support today, guys. You can see we closed above it yesterday, giving me hope. Okay, we're above $3,000. If we hold above this level, above the 50 SMA as well, we might pop from here, right? But the bad thing is, guys, today we broke that critical $3,000 level. We we broke that 50 SMA, and you can clearly see we're trending back in the $2,900 level, and we actually broke another critical support, which is at about $2,995. We're actually about 10 points below that right now. So going over here to the 10-day 30, this is actually a critical spot we broke as well. We broke that 180 SMA on the 10-day, or actually this is not the 30-minute chart, is it? This is the 10-day, 30-minute chart. We're slowly breaking it on the 10-day, 30-minute chart, this 180 SMA, which is actually another spot. Hey, maybe we can hold above it tomorrow, a spot that I'm looking at, you know, potentially bouncing above, or, you know, if we continue to sell off from here, this one could be dropping down to about 29.75, which is the next clear support that we see from the 3rd to about the 9th of um, the uh, July month here. So going back to, let's say, the 90-day, 2-hour, Let's see a bunch of different time frames. You can see it even better here, guys, right? We broke 3,000, 29.95. Now we're fiddling with about 29.85, with the next spot being at about 29.75, that next support level, which is very crucial at this point for us to hold above. So overall, guys, the markets right now, and specific the S&P 500, it's seeing a sell-off that is much needed, right? The markets were very overheated, very overbought in terms of the R. 
our side. We were hitting all-time highs after all-time highs after all-time highs. We hit 3,017, guys. It was coming to a point that it just needed to cool off. And now, you know, all those levels we talked about, those are levels to keep an eye on for potential supports. And if we're looking at this 184-hour chart very quickly, you guys can see how relevant that 2975 level is. Not only is that a support, it's also right on top of that 50 simple moving average support as well. That has been a support over the past couple of weeks here as the markets have been rallying. So that is a critical spot, guys. If we actually break below that and get back into the low 2900s at that point, you know, we may be going back to 2950, maybe 2915. These next support lines that I do have down here. And this is why I always have these lines drawn out, guys. I'm making it easier on myself, right? I'm making it easier to see where the next support levels are as we break, you know, previous ones, right? We broke, let's say we break this one. I already know which one's the next one to watch out for because I already have it drawn out. And I think that's very nice. It's a very nice way to keep things in track. And I just like it for just knowing when the next spot of support is and for organization purposes, right? So that's the SPX there. We'll go to the Dow right now very quickly. Let's take a look again. Very overbought, right? It was very overbought in terms of the RSI. Very overextended here, as you guys can see. We didn't really have a pullback for a couple of days ever since we broke out of that wedge. We had about one, two, three. We had about three, four days of straight green, right? All-time high after all-time high after all-time high. And it seems like we found the plateau at about 27400 We had one, two days of consolidation there. And instead of popping up to continue the run, it seems like now we are curling down. We are dumping. We are starting to officially pull back here. So a couple of levels on the Dow that I'm looking at for potential support are going to be old resistances here at about 26900 to about 26,950 to about $27,000, right? This uh, broad area right here, it was an older resistance. We broke above it. Now I expect to hold above that level if the markets, and in specific the Dow Jones here, is going to continue, are going to continue, you know, the uptrends that they've been on, right? In specific the Dow. So if we do end up holding this on the pullback, where is that putting us, guys? That's also putting us on top of the 180 or rather the 50 simple moving average, the green line here, the 50 SMA support. So it seems like now the Dow wants to pull back to that level. If we see another gap down tomorrow, I would say it's definitely pulling down to that 50 SMA. And from there, we're going to see, are we going to hold that level? At that point, the RSI is going to be pulled down to a healthy spot. Are we going to hold that level and continue the uptrend? Or if we break that level, guys, and we start to break back into, let's say, 26,600, 26,500. There could be more selling from a technical perspective there on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So going back over here to the NQ, guys, and this fires me up whenever moves like this happen, it is still dropping. Take a look at that. 0.64% right here, down $51. Oh my goodness here, guys. You can see now we're fighting that trend line. We're still trending above it technically. The pattern is still intact because we still are at a higher low right now, but we are starting to dip into it, right? So if we break below 7,700, and I know that is about 150 to 200 points off, more like 150 off from where we are right now, if we break that support and start to go to that 180 SMA, that is going to be a break of that trend that we are seeing here of that that uptrend that we've been on over the past couple of weeks, pretty much since the beginning of June, right? So keep an eye. If that does end up breaking, that's going to be a pretty key um, you know, technical break there from a bearish perspective. And if we're looking at the 20 day, one hour, we're already starting to break it uh, even closer there, right? As you guys can see, as well as that 180 SMA support, we're uh, breaking below that. So that is quite 
um, alarming here in my opinion. And you guys can see tech has actually uh, been doing pretty bad over the past day. Today in general, tech didn't do so well. Apple down a dollar fifteen, Amazon down seventeen bucks, Facebook down two dollars, Google down seven dollars, Microsoft down about a dollar, and Netflix. You guys can see how much it dumped as we saw in the beginning of this video. And let's just take a look now very quickly. You know, Netflix is at three hundred and twenty three dollars per share think about how much of a weight this is going to have on the nasdaq tomorrow this could affect all of tech and all of really just the nasdaq tomorrow in tomorrow's trading session so this changes my perspective in for tomorrow's session just from the uh, really the reaction that i've seen in netflix's stock and the nasdaq futures literally from the past 10 minutes and we'll talk about that here in a couple of minutes so overall guys that is what the market's looking like right now we're pulling back healthy pullbacks but the nasdaq and the weight netflix is flying down right now and if it holds and opens at this level you know i think we could see some red you know bleeding into tomorrow as well at this point so i'm really interested to see you know how all of this does end up playing out and normally right now i would be doing a trading update but to be completely honest with you guys i actually didn't trade today i didn't really see any opportunities and i'm interested in potentially hopping into some swing trades here if these markets find a bottom and the key word here is if they find a bottom here in the next couple of days on the pullbacks that they've been on. And I figured sitting on that cash is a bit smarter right now and to see if the markets find a bottom to get in on some of these, you know, better entry points on some of these market ETFs, maybe some of these larger cap stocks that we'll talk about in a minute here. So that is really just the update, you know, for today. Let me know down below in the comment section, what do you guys think about the markets, Netflix, I'm sure once you watch this video you'll know what the earnings are and all that kind of stuff i don't know what the earnings are quite yet so um because honestly they they probably haven't even reported they or rather they did report it because of the reaction that we are seeing here um but i didn't get to look too deep into them so i would love to know what you guys have to think about that so let's talk about neo stock now guys neo stock nio and then we'll do rapid fire through the other stocks and etfs that i have on my piece of paper here so neo stock really the basics of neo or the basis of neo right now that i want to talk about is the break out of these moving average resistances that we are seeing on the longer time frame chart here which is the 184 hour and notice we all know at this point neo has been one of the most speculative stocks out there very volatile it's very turbulent right this stock was ten dollars and 64 cents a couple of months ago and to make a long story short neo has faced a lot of problems executives have been leaving slumping sales you know their guidance a lot of the stuff has just been very very negative regarding neo and we can see the stocks has been taken a hit since then it's literally cut five times its value pretty much we can see the 50 sma the green line and the 180 sma the yellow line both of these levels have been acting as resistances right and now we're noticing how those levels they're not acting as resistances anymore guys we're breaking out of the 180 sma the 50 sma seems like we pulled down and then we held this 50 SMA as a support here we popped above it and now I want to see whether or not NEO is going to break and start to retest that $4 level that we were at on the 10th of July just one week ago guys we can see since then it's kind of been cooling off making lower uh you know lower highs and such right you guys can kind of see that and if I make a bit uh of a, a clear distinction here with these trend lines you know, you can see what what pattern it's kind of been on, right? Let me take a look and show you guys. Here, take a look at that. You know, kind of like a little, um, you know, downward channel here. And I'm thinking if we break out, right, that's going to be a bounce on the 50 SMA. That's solidifying the bounce there. And that's also a very bullish move because we're breaking out of the resistance of a downward trending channel. And from there, I think a move from 350-ish, maybe 355 up to $4, that's a very viable and 
possible move right there of about 10-12%. And of course, since NEO is battered down so much, you know, it could double twofold from here. Who knows, right? It can run back up to $6, $7. And I'm honestly already invested in NEO. It's a very speculative position for me, and I'm down quite a bit. But I still have a feeling that in the long term, if they execute, obviously they're not profitable. They're extremely speculative. They can go out of business. But long term, you know, the goal on one of these risky speculative investments is to 5x. 10x your investment, right? Maybe if this company, you know, turns into a Tesla in terms of its market cap, and right now their market cap's like two, three billion, one billion. I haven't checked in a while, but it's right around that area. And Tesla's market cap's like a 30, 40, 50 billion. You know, if a Neo becomes a Tesla, I know it's very, very hard, but let's say, you know, it plays out that way, that's like a 10x, guys. And imagine if you put 500 bucks, you 10x that. That's $5,000, right? That's a pretty, pretty amazing return. And some positive things right now about NEO, let me just pull up my notes here because I do have um, some notes written about this and I'm being blown up right now by Robinhood. Um, this is funny, by Robinhood. Uh, notifications about Netflix. We'll talk about that in a second. But some positive things are that Neo delivered a total of 3,553 vehicles in the second quarter of 2019, although that was a bit lower from the previous quarter. It was actually a 21% decline from the previous quarter. But the good thing is that they beat the analyst expectations on that, right? And you guys can see you know, they are releasing some new vehicles here. The all-new ES6 SUV is something to keep an eye out for. And again, a negative is, of course, the slumping sales, executives leaving, and competition with Tesla and some of these other big names that are actually teaming up right now. I'm not sure if you guys saw, but Ford and VW, they're teaming up right now for the electric vehicle space. So there's a lot of new players coming in, but NEO, it's on the beginning of, of, of a breakout. It's showing some confirmations of the start of a breakout so now we just want to see if it follows through with it right so that is neo right now um and let's take a look very quickly at some other stocks that I'm personally watching, and one in particular that a subscriber shouted out, and we'll talk about that one right now, and that one is none other than Domino's Pizza, guys. Some good old Domino's cheesy pizza with some pepperoni, right? That is what we all like. Ticker symbol D B or D P Z rather, D P Z. So let me just pull out you know, the support resistance tool very quickly. You guys can see DPZ actually reported earnings yesterday. Earnings came in at 219 versus 2.04. So that's a very good beat in earnings. I don't know what their guidance is looking like. I don't know what they did in terms of revenue, but initially earnings look very, very solid. And you guys can see the stocks reacting quite well today, up about 2.6%, up about $6.50. I'm honestly really liking this from initially seeing it right here because again I like trading stocks after earnings so we see their earnings in terms of VPS was quite positive the stocks reacting positive this gives me some more faith in investing or rather trading DPZ here than if DPZ didn't report earnings and we didn't really know what they were doing right so that's why I like to wait until after earnings to get some confirmation and some more market sentiment of how the price is reacting to that earnings report. So you guys can see on um, the 184 hour, let's go to the one year, one day, actually, you guys can see we're clearly holding a support that has been a support from the past couple of months. You guys can see 240 to 245, this general level DPZ has held above that level. And ever since we've dropped, well, we've held above that level. And even after the earnings report. So I think that's a good solidifying sign that this is another hold above that support, right? You know, with the technical analysis and technical data that we do have right now. But the one thing that I do want to see now, if we go back to that 184 hour, you know, one thing I do want to see now is for it to continue its push. I want to see it get out of 252 
of this resistance right here, actually from uh, uh, you know a couple months ago, back in January. If we get out of this level, and it was actually also a resistance back in um, you know April. You know, if we get out of this and hold it as a new support, and we start to pop up and break that EMA line, this light blue line that you do see here, I'm really liking DPZ at that point, and I'm already liking the early signs that it's showing. But I just want to see a hold on 252, 253. And tomorrow, guys, you know, if we do consolidate and then slowly start to pop from that level, you know, I think this could be a very beautiful entry point on DPZ. Just take a look at the RSI here, guys. It's looking very nice. It seems like it's found its bottom. It's cracking up above that, um, you know, oversold spot at 30. It's at 35. That's a very good, you know, healthy RSI right there. So overall, I like DPZ. Just hopefully it holds 253, 255-ish. That could be a good entry point. So Visa is another one. That is an earnings play, in my opinion. You know, this one is reporting earnings tomorrow, I believe. Or not tomorrow. It's actually on the 23rd of July. And at this point, you know, V is at all-time highs, right? That's no... Um, you really can't deny that. You can clearly see V's just been killing it, right? We hit 181 recently. Now we're pulling back and we're looking like it... Or, you know, we're about to touch and retest that 50 SMA. And this is a spot that if we bounce and hold above that level, you know, we could be fighting for another all-time high at that point. And the interesting thing here, guys, is, again, we are reporting earnings here. So how is the, you know, how are the earnings for V, for Visa going to affect the stock? Is it going to, you know, pump the stock up to all-time highs again, which would be ideal here, guys, because I'll show you a scenario here in a couple of seconds. Or is it going to maybe drop Visa below the 50 SMA, which would be a technical break, maybe below the 180 SMA. Who knows, guys, right? But let's say their earnings are good. Let me show you a potential setup that could be forming here. Just take a look. So let's say we consolidate here for a couple more days at 178. Maybe we sell off to 177 and slowly consolidate on that 50 SMA, bring that RSI down a bit to maybe 35, 30, you know, into that earnings report, that would open up an interesting scenario because if the stock reacts positively to the earnings, let's say the earnings are healthy, they're really good, you know, we could be setting up for a nice dip buy back up to 181 at about 177, 176, right? And let me show you guys, 177, you know, if we get down there, up to 181, 182, that's about a 3% margin of profit. That's pretty, pretty good. Let's say you're trading with 1000 bucks. that's 30 bucks. Let's say you're trading with 10000 bucks. that is 300 bucks, and so forth, right? So that is Visa. Keep an eye out for it. Earnings are coming out on the 23rd. And Netflix, guys, let's just take a look at this one because this is some live action right now that I really do like seeing. And oh my goodness, guys. You know, I saw a Robinhood update a couple of seconds ago, and briefly it says, you know, Netflix, what did it say? It said, Netflix announced quarterly earnings of $0.60 cents per share, beating expectations by 7%, yet the stock dives like that. That's crazy, right? So that just goes to show that sometimes, guys, even if initially the earnings look good, you know, the stock could still fall, right? The stock really does whatever, it's, uh, whatever it wants at the end of the day, regardless of whether the earnings were good, bad, mediocre, decent, okay. Like, it's just crazy, right? It does whatever it wants. So this could be an interesting setup tomorrow. Um, the general support here, you know, is 340. And guys, don't just think that Netflix is going to open up at 322. A lot of the times, these stocks swing heavily, especially once they announce earnings. And then once the conference call starts, you know, when the CEO is talking, whoever talks in the conference call, the CFO, you know, sometimes things they say, you know, people are listening and that swings the stock as well. So don't be surprised if this, you know, swings all the way back up for all we know, right? Don't be surprised if it swings back up to 350. And let's say it swings back up to 350, you know, at that point, 340 would be a support I'm watching. And if we actually hold 340, this could be an interesting play, um, maybe midway up the gap, you know, I don't know if it's going to fill all the way back up, but it could be a decent play in in between 340 and 380. So Netflix, definitely interested to see how that one uh, plays out here. And you guys can already see, if we go to that one day, one minute, 
seems like it's already finding its bottom here so keep an eye if it does end up spiking back up here um you know in the aftermarket session before tomorrow's uh trading hours even open so that would be interested to see or interesting to see there and very quickly guys some other ones that did very well today because i already know this video is going a bit too long here but any of the, uh some of the other ones are gold gold has been on an absolute tear today it was up 15 dollars jnug has been doing doing extremely, extremely well. Um, it was up 13% today, so good job to anybody that was able to trade JNUG. I didn't play it, but if you did play it, let me know down below in the comment section. I would love to know. I'm watching this one because gold has been super, super hot. As always, you know, SPXS and SQQQ, these are two market ETFs that trade based upon the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. And this one in particular, SPXS, this one trades based upon the S&P 500. Whenever the S&P 500 is going down like it did today, this ETF, SPXS, goes up in price. So if we continue this sell-off, I'm watching this. Again, it trades strictly on the S&P 500. And one that trades strictly on the NASDAQ is SQQQ, which goes up whenever the NASDAQ is selling off. So if these markets sell off, these are going to be my two go-to ETFs to profit on that downside, right? And some other ones that I'm watching very quickly are crude oil. Crude oil seems like it is slipping below that $57 level, guys, which is pretty bearish in my opinion. So if we go to that 184 hour, you guys can see what I'm talking about. We slip below 57, very bearish. Now we're playing with that 180 SMA. This is either going to be a support, guys where we bounce and then play UWT, which goes up whenever crude oil is going up, or this is going to break. We're going to maybe fill the gap down at $53, $54, and at that point, DWT, ticker symbol DWP, or T rather, DWT, will be the play which goes up whenever crude oil is selling off. So those are just a couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm watching, guys, and I'm going to wrap up the video right here for today. So if you enjoy the video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. Feel free to subscribe to the the channel if you haven't done so already hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that i do make a video if you want to be more connected with me with the Strive Smart community. All those links are down below. The Discord chat, the Facebook group, the my Instagram, the Strive Smart Instagram, all that stuff is linked down below. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. I appreciate every single one of you guys. Oh, and go check out my M1 Finance review video that I just made and uploaded earlier today. If you guys were ever interested in having a full depth, unbiased review on M1 Finance, it's linked down below. Go check it out. You'll probably see it up here, um, you know, as a clickable video. Go check it out. I promise you'll like it. I'll put a lot of work into that. I'll check. I'll, I'll, blah, 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 blah. I'll catch you all <laughs> in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.